when the days were completed for their purification according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph took Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Just as there is written of the law of the Lord, every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord, and to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves of two young pigeons, in accordance with the dictate in the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It has been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not should, should see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Now, Master, you may let your servant go in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in the sight of all these people. A light for revelation to the Gentiles, and glory for your people of Israel. The Gospel of the Lord It is a feast of the Virgin. It is a day of a special joy. But it's also a feast that carries with an, an announcement of pain, of terrible pain for our mother. First of all, this old man, this old prophet, shows us with his behavior that we must know how to wait. God made him a promise. The years passed. He grew old. He did not know when he will die, and the promise was not fulfilled. Until the end of his life, he had the joy of being able to see, to hold the Savior in his arms, and so he proclaimed it. We must know how to wait. We must give God time. God's time is not our task. We must know how to wait. First teaching. The second is that Jesus is proclaimed as a Savior by a wise saint of Israel, as well as by this woman, Anna. But Simeon, when he makes this proclamation, says not only that he is the Savior, but that he is also light. Jesus is proclaimed as Savior and as light. That is to say, he is not only going to save us with his death on the cross, which although he does not speak of it directly, he does speak of it indirectly when he later refers and addresses the Virgin. He will save us with his death and with his teaching. Christ's teaching is saving. It can be annoying because it goes again, sometimes again our instincts, but it goes against our instincts where our instincts harm others. That is, it is always saving. If they tell you that you cannot steal, maybe it bothers you, but you think of the joy fell by the one who is not going to be robbed. If they tell you that you cannot cheat on your wife's or husband, well, it will force you to be faithful, but think of the joy that the one who is not cheated will feel. Christ saved us. His message is Savior. And we must repeat it today, in this moment in which the message of Jesus is being questioned as never before. Christ is Savior, and He will save by the light of His teaching, and He will save by His shed blood. And then He turns to the Virgin, but first He tells her that Jesus is going to be a sign of contradiction, and that He is going to expose what is inside hearts. How is Jesus going to do that? How does He do it? If you do not love God in your heart, even if you go to Mass, even if you do many devotions, if you do not love God, the reality of life allowed by God will expose what is in your heart. That is to say, if you do not love God and you approach God only for your own interest, the reality of life will reveal that you are selfish 
and that you were with God only for that interest. If you love God, if for you the first thing is God, the gratitude to God, if for you what He has already given you is more important than what He will give you, the bloodshed is more important than money or health. The open doors of heaven are more important than success on earth. Then what is in your heart will be made manifest and the Lord will say to you, Come, blessed of my Father. How many times I hear, I read mails from people complaining about God, even with observed complaints. Well, a lady writes that her husband has cheated on her and that that is God's fault. The fault will be her husband's, not God's. Yes, but God has allowed it. God has made us free. Perhaps this lady has made us realize that we are free. In the end, some people put their own sins or sins of others on God's account. If you are with God, for better or worse, you are showing that you really care about God and that you are not for Him alone to see what you can get out of Him. Next, tremendous thing to you, a sword will pierce your heart. I do not know if all mothers always suffer for the children. Certainly many do. Certainly not all, or almost none, as Our Lady suffered. To see her son die, to see him tortured, to see the innocent lamb led to the slanderer, that was the sword of pain. She had others before, the flight to Egypt. In addition, the fear during so many moments of life that sometimes would happen to her, the relative separation from public life, but above all, all the great blows was death on the cross. How did Mary accept it? Because it was a cold shower on a feast day. How did Our Lady accept it? Surely in her heart, she said, Here is the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to your word. I have accepted this child, not to make a bargain with him, and I will be with this child to the end, even if it costs me. But there is a very beautiful Eastern tradition on the Eastern Church. I like it very much, and it has been reflected in the art of many icons some of them especially beautiful. In that icon, in that tradition, upon hearing these words of Simeon, Our Lady became sad, and the image of Our Lady in this icon is sad. She is crying, or at least with a gesture, with a grimace of pain, because she is thinking, what is going to happen to my child? What is going to happen to him? Why is this venerable old man saying this? It is a warning from God what is going to happen to my child. She gets sad like any other mother, and according to tradition, the baby Jesus, the baby, seeing his mother sad, comes to her and passes his little hand over her face to comfort her. He fills her with kisses and caresses for comfort for her. She is the Virgin of Tenderness. There are many paintings like this. The sad virgin and the child who consults her. Remember this very important, this moment, the virgin, virgin of tenderness, of the child's tenderness towards his mother. I don't know if Jesus spoke, surely not, but his gesture, gestures were enough. If he had spoken, he would have told her mother, Here I am. Here I am. Don't worry. Mom, here I am. And I believe that this is what we have to say today about the presentation of the Lord and the announcement of this word to the Virgin. Today we have to say to Mary, Mother, here I am. I have a mother and you have a son, a sinful son, not the child Jesus, the innocent lamb. A sinful son, but a, sin, a son of last, and a son who loves you. 
a son who sometimes gives you displeasure. A lot of displeasure, but a son who loves you can sinners love? Well, you will have to ask St. Mary, Magdalene, for example. A son who loves you, Mary. A son who wants to consult you. Here I am. I am your son. Amen. <laughs>